Hi guys, George here. Um, today I'm going to bring to you a after action report about scenario HASMO 12 Foreign Legions. Um, it's part of the good old scenario uh, pack that I, I purchased from HASMO. And um, I'm going to actually read the card. I'm not going to post a virtual copy of that. Um, so the path to victory. Republicans win at Gay Man by controlling building J4 and 11 other buildings between hex rows I and N. So basically, what's going on is that building J4 is this building over here. Um, and what's going on is that the Republicans have to uh, capture as well as building J4, 11 buildings between I and N, as in Norman, or November, I and N. How many buildings are there? There's one, two, three, four, five, well, five, that one doesn't count, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Practically all the buildings. Let's see. Oh no, here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Well, practically all. And um, let's see about parity. Place nationalist 8180 leader with an 81. Add one MMG to Republican OB. These uh, scenarios, they, they really kind of make you think a little bit. Uh, but basically, um, the way we approach this um, uh, scenario was, uh, as you can see, my friend here, he was playing the, um, the uh, fascist. <clears throat> he was playing fascist and he opted for a forward uh, defense that was layered all, all the way to the back. Uh, I was playing the left-leaning side of the uh, uh, adversaries and I was opting for a pincer movement because if you take a look at the terrain here it's conducive to a nice pincer movement as opposed to a forward attack, and it's never wise to do a forward attack. Now there is a special SSR uh, attributable to this uh, scenario. There's a SSR with respect to the uh, Russian early war doctrine as it was uh, included in the module Haka um, Pale with respect to the Republican side that I was playing. So what that means essentially is that the um, the Russian tanks, in addition to being obligated to do platoon movement, they have to move first. Do we remember that at all times? Mostly, mostly nine times out of ten we did. But let's see what we what happened, what transpired in the scenario, the action here. That's what the scenario, this uh, video is about. Is the action, uh, more or less. I'm not really going over the uh, scenario uh, per se. Uh, the scenario card. So here we go. We are doing concealment gains right at the start to see which units conceal and which units do not. And you know what? Uh, I did turn off the preference not to center on on the uh, circle, but it seems to be doing it in any case. I'm going to turn off my image, okay, and I'm going to uh, enlarge the board to the best of my ability. So let's do that right off the bat now. There we go. Now let's enlarge that board. There we go. So you can see the unit the units more uh, better. Now I also encourage you to use Neil Uden's uh, um, chart here, that uh, turn track and and whatnot, because it's 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 a very useful tool. You have your victory conditions here. You know your ELR and sand. 
I also put it on on the info section of the of Vassal, but I also put it on the uh, on the counter itself for the sniper. All right, so we're doing concealment gain. Here are all the units that are concealing on the um, nationalist side, or no, Republican on the Republican side. I think I was using very harsh terms um, in my previous uh, video that really uh, did wonders on the YouTube algorithm. So as the Republican, uh, I am moving my tanks on board first. Uh, these are, I believe, T-26s, and these are early Panzers, right? And although they, their main armament is a CMG of six firepower, it has uh, two chances at uh, rolling uh, for the two kill. So they cannot be underestimated in terms of strength. So let's uh, roll along. Here I am moving my, my Russian tanks on board. They lose concealment, they remain in motion. So they 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 um, they remain in motion so they're more difficult to to hit. And I do not need to roll for mechanical reliability in the following uh, turn. I, I still need to get them to their positions and basically I, I split them up in two platoons. One platoon would roll this way on top of the village and the other platoon would try to get to the rear of the uh, enemy forces. So that's interesting. So now we are at uh, movement phase still. We're going to try and move everybody up to the best of our ability along the axis of attack and hopefully uh, retain as much concealment as possible. Uh, and, and I succeeded in getting some uh, units into close combat situations while maintaining their their concealment status, which was very rewarding for me, I believe. But in war, everything does not go as planned, and uh, Murphy's Law is what preeminates, as you will see uh, what's going on here. So I guess we forgot some uh, the concealment and... I'll let my opponent uh, go ahead and conceal. That's what happened there. Still turn one, movement phase, and everybody's going CX because, look, you only have seven and a half turns to, com to complete these, this objective. You're starting all the way back here. And did I set them back further than they were supposed to be set up? No, X row Y. Yeah, so I've set them up as uh, close as possible in concealment terrain, so I could get concealment. Concealment is um, is a, a a very powerful tool for the attacker as well as the defender. And everybody's going CX right off the bat. But given the terrain, um, the terrain here. Uh, it's very hard to move up in a very fluid fashion and still maintain concealment. Yep. I'm going to mention if you guys want to uh, run this scenario, uh, run this video at 2x, uh, by all means, uh, do so. I think um, with after action reports. What am I doing with that tips and tactics? This isn't tips and tactics. Well, there is some tips and tactics. Let's. Let's move that to uh, after action report. There you go. Yeah, I didn't have a second cup of coffee, guys. Wow. So now we're rolling on the two hit. My opponent is rolling on the two hit. And he ro rolls high numbers, a 9 and a 10. And it, I believe these guys have a breakdown of 11. Yeah, there it is, B11. Let's see what happens. 
So it's now turn one defensive fire, as you can see. And here I am advancing and and to my opponent it still appears to be a frontal assault but my intentions are otherwise okay here we are we're having some fire we're, of course he's firing at oops, there's an LOS check and uh, higher terrain than both the source and the target uh, I, I, I'm not too sure if the verbose message is correct, but as you can see, it cuts the trees here. You check the LOS, and now I guess he's committed to, to, to fire. Maybe not. There's a sign. And what happened uh, after that? Let's take a look. Firing again. Ooh, there's a 12. There's our first MILF tank. Second tank to fire. Hits to kill. Not quite. Now, the other trick here is these guys are small targets, but the Russian units are not. Two kill. Two kill. Two, two kill rolls. You see that? Pretty lucky. And... We have a second MILF somehow. We have two MILFs now. That ain't good. Here we go again. To hit. To kill, to kill. Not quite. Yeah, Axis turn two now. Axis turn two. Prep fire phase. Those tanks prep fired. And now, as is customary, Oh, they, 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 he managed to score a broken unit here. As is customary, what happens usually when I play my Tuesday night opponent is skulking. This is not quite skulking. It's uh, taking better positions into in in the uh, in the village, I suppose. And now we're already in route phase. Um, I didn't see any possible places where I could attack. Um, I'm not too sure if the LMG is, is supposed to be uh, with basket, but actually I think I what I did was uh, I, I took the LMG from the broken unit. The, the leader did actually, yeah. Maybe not. Oh, he did, he did, yeah. All right, let's pause and go on to log two. Hold on one sec. So here we are back again, and uh, this is the second log, and we're now at Ally turn two. Um, we managed to make a considerable amount of advance to a point where we can uh, call it a, a meeting engagement to some extent, to, to, to some extent. We have um, two uh, out of the one, two, three, four, five, six uh, uh, Axis tanks um, mouthed. Uh, the four Russian tanks are remaining in motion and approaching the enemy line. And so is the infantry, uh, uh, the Allied infantry. And this is, a, this is a very well aligned fire group that's coming into play. And uh, these guys uh, somehow have made it to a point where they're almost in a, uh, a they almost seem to be about to engage in a frontal attack. But as you can see here, the, the terrain kind of points in this direction, uh, the cover points in this direction. And some folks are already on the uh, north end of the board, uh, ready to, to pounce on these tanks as well, engage them into close combat. So let's see th how things transpire. Let's move along. Here we are. Uh, the I think that well, that's weather already. All right. And here we have, I believe, what appears to be a casualty reduction. Pretty nasty. 
So we were half squatted that fellow. There we go. And now we're already on movement phase. There is no profile to be had. We're moving. And as per the SSR, we're moving our tanks first. So here we are. Point 10. No rate. No hit. And we stopped. Now we're moving our tanks again through bypass. And uh, we don't care that this guy is, is in our way because his main army moved is malfunctioned. Let's make the board a little bit bigger so you guys can see what's going on. All right. All right, let's move along. Oh, that was a motion attempt, I believe. Hmm. I got his motion status. Oh, well. Here we are. The southern, uh, the sp southern spearhead is coming along pretty good. Getting positioned rather well. There we are. Okay. Wait. We're trying to count the hexes. Scored a nice, a nice AF team and passed the morale check. I was uh, indicating that there's concealment loss, I suppose. Still movement. We just left the brokey behind. Ah. Leave no man behind. Not in all cases. <laughs> we have some defensive fire uh, going on now. Ineffective, I might add. I did score a morale check. How about that? Now we're trying to fire back and getting axe on the two remaining tanks that are, or well, two t tanks that are in our way on the southern flank. I'm trying to attack the tank that has a milked weapon. With all the dice roll modifiers, I, the only thing I accomplished there was a, an acquisition, a tank scene. All right, we went CX because we got out of the uh, uh, ravine here, out of the gully and into the woods. Minimum move, the dude goes CX. And it's advanced phase turn two. Let's just uh, zoom out a little bit here. So two turns have gone by, and I essentially went from Y to T1. Now, I couldn't expect myself to do any better. I mean, with a leader, and the leaders are not that plentiful. Um, you got six movement factors, six to eight movement factors of the CX. You know, it, it and, and and we've come up to row T, and we have to make it all the way back here. Um, 
Am I complaining? No. But at the same token, um, I could not have expected my forces to go any further in two player turns. So we're managing our expectations here. Rolling tax checks to engage some uh, some tanks in close combat. Some dudes that did advance into uh, close combat, as you can see here, right here. Very interesting. And we rolled high numbers. So we're locked in melee. The infantry is not the tank. Yep, so we're looking for concealment gain. Guys, at the end of your close combat phase, always check for concealment gain. It's very important. And I did manage to make myself a coffee. Good stuff. All right. Let's move along. I think that's concealment gain operations here. Trying to deny me concealment because uh, it's a free loss check. Access turn two. We uh, rolled for weather and went straight to movement. And look what my opponent is doing. There's no point in facing uh, the juggernaut. Go to a better position and let him come to you. Oh well. And he brought his forces from here, well, one at least one armored party vehicle from here to there, because it appears there's more volume of troops here than there is there. I'm not sure, but it, it looks like he is trying to protect the heart of the village with this tank here, and instead of uh, trying to uh, uh, deny concealment or delay these forces or to take them head on. With two tanks in support, yeah, I wouldn't blame my opponent. And there goes the MILF tank. It's running away. And it's running away pretty good. Slang in motion. You don't have to repair anything. It says you may. Now this guy's running uh, away with his rear facing me. All right, his rear facing me. but And his turret tur turned... Uh, 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 180 degrees opposite of the direction he's going. Oh well, that makes for interesting um, interesting optics. <laughs> Where's the other guy going? We're trying to uh, hit him. I don't think we succeeded. To hit, I rolled an 11. So, I think I mouthed one of their weapons. Let's take a look. Or was that... Oh. I'm there. 10 vehicular target type, plus 1 for slow turret, plus 2, or restricted turret, uh, plus 2 for motion, minus 1 leader. Could have been my uh, MMG. I was trying to knock him out. There it goes. Everything is just disappearing, going headlong into the village. That was a dummy. That was a dummy that was trying to retreat. And I said, "Hey, wait a second. This guy, this dude, sees you up here. Where are you going?" Boom. Lost concealment. Still movement. And I'm firing. It's now what I had. He gave me all, all but one defensive fire, more or less, during the defensive fire. And, and 
The rest of his forces are consolidated right over there. Yeah, he's giving me plenty of room to maneuver, but at the point where I kind of come to the tree line, look what's waiting for me. Yeah, so we're already in route phase, advanced phase, and it moves up slightly. The main lead comes off, and there's concealment gain, of course. Yes, we do see each other. There you go. Despite a lot of hindrances. All right. There I got another prompt for another a log. So we're going to go on to log three. Here we are in log three, Allied turn three. Allied being the uh, socialist slash communist player. Hmm. We're rolling for weather. The half squad self rallies. We're rolling for mechanical reliability and we're moving along. They are achieving their objective, which was to go up here. We're assault moving forward. More assault moves. Well, that wasn't as an assault move. That was a dash. That was a dash. So ultimately, what I wanted to achieve was a two pincer attack. And um, I'm wondering if George Custard was my uh, late relative at one point or another. Must be the reason why I'm called George. Other than the fact that I'm of Greek ancestry. Why did I split my forces? Well, I don't know. Could be a good thing or a bad thing. Here we are advancing with the famous tanks. I, I, I probably forgot the heck of Palais rule. Forgive me, Chad and Chuck. <laughs> Ch Chad and Chuck. Say that quickly 10 times. <clears throat> oh, look at that. He has a low ass. He's going to fire. No, but he strips me of concealment. There we go, 700s. No, well, three hundreds is range of seven. So that's why you moved that other force down there. That uh, AFE down there. We had temporarily moved one uh, AFE out just to check the terrain. Now, knowing that he has a loss to these two hexes uh, from here, I'm reconsidering the axis of attack slightly so I can bring up as much forces as I can uh, hidden. Unbeknown to me, the dude has an MMG here with a high rate of fire. We all know this approaching. Now here he is targeting my T26, my beloved T26. Gets a turret hit, two two tails, and put a hit. Guess it was intensifier. And he's going wacko. Look at that. Two hits. There we go. We're putting final fires. They are opening fire. Looks like the Battle of Little Little Red Horn or whatever here. Or Little Big Horn was that. Oh, advancing fire. We hit, we killed. 
It's a blaze. We're firing back. Getting acquisition markers. And the troops are advancing. And in good position. And looking for concealment gain, right? Let's look for concealment gain. So now we're uh, access turn three. I guess the other the dice roll was weather, which there wasn't any. And we're actually going to have a prep fire here. What choice does he have? And that causes an immobilization. We do a task check, he remains in the armored fighting vehicle. Another tip. Ain't working. So we have two mouse weapons, one burning wreck, and we're rolling. And now we immobilized, uh, well, my opponent immobilized one of my armored fighting vehicles. And it looks like my luck has changed at this point in time with respect to with respect to um, the armored fighting vehicles. Up to now, the tanks were able to advance unscathed. Now he's opening up with the MMG. And he shocks. Now I got one unit shocked. And one unit, one AFE immobilized. How much you can do, you gotta attack. You don't attack, you ain't gonna win the game. So we actually uh, killed another tank. So we have, starting off with six tanks, right? Let's take a look at the scenario card one more time. That is, let, let me take a look at the scenario. Yep, six tanks, two have mouthed weapons, one is a burning wreck, the other one is a wreck. So he's left with two tanks. And the right smack in the middle of the board for now. Yep. So here we have defensive fire opportunities and we're going to be taking them. And what do we do to Mr. Cortez? How much? IFT, 12. Oops, something went wrong. So we're doing random selection to see which MMG broke and got one broken. So defensive fire, this is the time to fire. With all the hindrances in the way, ain't happening. Yeah, good fire group there. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's still uh, an eight fire group. But with all the hindrances in the way, there's no way I can dislodge this MMG from it being where it is. Where, where are we at now? Still defensive fire. Wow. Nice big firefight. Now basically this armored fighting vehicle up here is more or less like a wall. Alright, so let's log, let's uh, go into log 4. I had to skip log 4 because it was not properly saved. 
but basically what happened up to there was that um, quite a few things. Uh, one of my tanks uh, blew up here. Uh, the other one was immobilized here. And I sent another tank uh, up here to engage this infantry and dislodge them from this wall that they constructed here. Um, the shock tank, uh, I, I, of course, uh, blew up. My second tank that was behind this fellow here was uh, in, engaged uh, and there's a burning wreck here. I think we ultimately forgot to spread the flames and I'm not too sure if, if brush is burnable terrain here. Um, that's something we may have forgotten, but we took our first building on the northern flank. Um, then here, the MMG ultimately just scooted away and got, gone back into here. And um, we also uh, got so close to the enemy um, that uh, using concealment that um, we engaged in, in melee as well, in close combat. And up to now, I would say this progress is great, but time is running out. We're already on ally turn five. Uh, and there is now one, two, two and a half turns left to capture 11 buildings. And uh, there is still uh, two big elements that are, uh, I would say, power stacks for the Axis, which is one is the MMG with the uh, leader here, and then there's our Italian friends in the Victory Hex location. So let's see what happens. Axis rally phase already, turn five. And it's funny trying to repair his weapons. He gets one repaired. The CMG on that tank is is a is a mouth. I'm trying to rally. Leonov actually bit the bullet here and had a hard time rallying, but his forces moved up steadily and also engaged in close combat here knocked out a, a tank, uh, abandoned it, got it abandoned. Actually, uh, had this tank survived and this tank did not go there, I would have probably wanted to bring him behind here. So I would deny a, a route location along this flank of, of the village. That didn't, uh, uh, that didn't transpire at all. We needed whatever remaining tanks we had to, to actually uh, uh, make a dent in the front lines of the enemy. I have no idea what he's doing down there, but he has a muffed weapon. This other fellow is coming along. Oh, why is he seeing G um, mouth? I don't know. That dude is broken or pinned. Now uh, we have a little bit of an audacious move here. Moving up. And a bit of a overrun attack as well. Somehow there was it was forgotten that there was some units here, so area fire. Or maybe an attacking. Advancing fire. Here we 
we go. And more routing. And we have another maybe up here. Look at this conundrum. Our pin units, a, an abandoned uh, tank, a good order tank, a 447. Rolling for close combat. Two rallies. Leon Love is a pack of an added. At this point, I'm really giving up. There's no way I'm going to expel uh, the Axis forces from 11 buildings. I, I barely have two or three at my disposal. Here we go. More close combats. And I finally rolled 12 with infiltration. I mean, uh, snake eyes with infiltration. And we're moving up. I, I believe one of my leaders on the northern flank was taken out by a sniper. So these guys now are more or less leaderless. And uh, whatever units break, this was a lucky roll right there. Whatever units break will be out of the fight or very hard to get back into the fight. Thanks to a couple of sniper checks. Where is the Axis sniper? Oh, all the way down here. How about that? Anywho. So, where's my pincer movement? Ultimately, it, um, it, uh, it becomes a frontal head-to-head, uh, fist-to-fist attack. Um, reason why is the defenders are already in the village, and um, what choice do you have then to take uh, the route into the village with the most amount of cover, advancing into uh, pos positions held, defended by MMGs from open ground or, or little or no uh, cover, is not a bright idea. Here we go with a nice attack, MG to MG. You know, four, and here you have more breakages. Casualty reduced in close combat here. Triple point blank fire. Talking about defensive fire here. And a sniper check. What happened there? Did he take the MMG with him? That shouldn't have happened. Board for cash points, guys. Come on, get on the ball. Yeah. It's nice to review these logs and then see your mistakes that you've done.
So in this close combat, we eliminated the crew and we're still locked in a melee with a broken unit that has to uh, evacuate. How did he make it up? Hello. We might be talking about consuming game here. Oh, well, the broken units are not concealed. Well, let's see if there's another log file. I think it, this is this is situation. Is, um, this is how the situation more or less ended. Uh, but we'll double check that. Let's see. All right, so this is more or less the, the furthest I could advance to the best of my recollection. Uh, here we are uh, with units that uh, advance, but they do not advance unscathed, um, in large part because of the defender's frontal, um, frontal and well-crafted defense, right? Uh, and you have to ask yourself, what's behind those concealment counters and do i have enough of a force now to even dent this defense and capture a very ambitious uh, uh, victory objective uh, so let's take a pause i'll see if there's another log and we'll continue so actually this is where uh, i just checked there wasn't any other log beyond this point um, we did make it to Turn six, and at this point, if we take a look at the attacker's OB versus what we have here, uh, we're down to one leader, really. Um, and most of the units that are left over are green, uh, broken. Axis player still has a, a bit of an advantage when it comes to tanks. So, so we decided to, to throw in the towel here. So let's zoom out again and take a look at what we achieved. We did manage to uh, achieve a, an advance. That was quite substantial, right? But, but, um, in large part to the defenders, uh, the defenders well-crafted defense, they still have enough firepower to shred these guys. Um, and in terms of time left over, unless I had the luck of a lottery winner, there would not have been any opportunity to expel these guys from the remaining um, victory objectives. So we uh, threw in the towel uh, and uh, Cortunta, Carunta, Spain would not uh, be a, a victory location for, for dear old George in this one. Never was too fond of foreign legions, but um, uh, it was a well-designed scenario uh, however if you were to play the scenario i would highly recommend that the republicans be taken by the more experienced uh, player because that's the side that is more challenging to play uh, and it presents a, a very good opportunity for you to practice your defense skills uh, I think what is critical in uh, playing this game well is knowing your concealment rules and using concealment to the best of your ability. Um, it's also uh, very important for the Axis player to remember that uh, the Panzers have two chances at the two-kill uh, table, not one. Uh, it's, it's one hit uh, and two kills. Uh, and, and knowing your pen armor penetration, 
very well. With that said, on the Russian player, uh, uh, on the Russian player turn, for the Russian player, what's important to, to keep in mind is A, concealment, B, uh, knowing how to use combined tactics well. And what I mean by that is, okay, so you're going to advance your, your, your tanks um, first as per the SSR, but do not bring them in close range to the Axis armor and do not ex overextend them beyond the, the uh, movement range of your infantry. Um, keep in mind that you should keep your tanks in a position where they can be reached by infantry, where the infantry can subsequently benefit from some uh, protection from them, even though you can't do an armor assault in this uh, scenario. You, you can still advance underneath the tank in the following turn. You'll, you'll have the same cover underneath an armored fighting vehicle as you would in the woods. So it, it gives you the opportunity to uh, traverse um, terrain. So basically, what I'm saying is, if I really uh, played my tanks well, and it, and imagine this. So I'm going to go off off uh, topic a little bit, but if I had a a a, a tank here, uh, and then the unit was I had a unit there, and the advance face it goes underneath the the tank, has temporary cover from the tank, right? That's a plus one. He's not in open ground. And if he survives any attacks, he'll go into the brush and try to penetrate towards the rear of the village. And at least to deny uh, a, uh, a, a route location to, to these guys. So that's a, a thing that I kind of discounted, but I was probably not in a position to do, given that that tank was mobilized up there. So there's lots of things to learn from here. Um, uh, plus, it, it, it is a very fun scenario to play. That's uh, all I have to say, really. And I spoke for nearly an hour. I know that my AARs are, uh, have to go at least an hour. And I'm trying to present to you some scenarios that uh, you know are short in length and um, have a lot of action going on in them. I hope you enjoyed it. I would like to thank all the new subscribers again and all the existing ones that supported me from the very beginning. I thank you so much, guys, for sticking around. Uh, take care and have a wonderful weekend and happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. Take care. Bye.